You're tuned in to your Celebration Radio Network. We have uh, Rabbi Isaac in Los Angeles, California this morning, and uh, we've got some questions for you today. Our phone number is 800-721-9313, 800-721-9313. If you would like to uh, get in on the conversation, we would uh, be happy to talk with you. Again, that number is 800-721-9313. I know that uh, Ryan and you have been uh, friends for several years. Uh, This is the first time I'm talking to you, and uh, I hope that uh, at at the end of it, we'll be friends as well, if not already. (laughs) I think you guys are already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, you know what? I look forward to that, and I and I I really hope that we'll have many opportunities uh, to share wisdom and time and and uh, perspective together. Yeah, same here. So (laughs) Uh, this is this is cool. Yeah. So again, this is uh, this is my very good friend, Rabbi Isaac Jarrett, and soon to be or probably already Bill's very good friend also um, from the Los Angeles area and. And uh, the rabbi and I um, have known each other for, gosh, how long, Rabbi? At least two years? How long have you been coming? Almost almost three years. Almost three now. Wow, wow. Time flies when you're having fun. And yeah, yeah, uh, just, you know, we've had just such great conversations and, 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 you know, so much cooperation, you know, between me as a Christian having a ministry and you as a, you know, Jewish rabbi, you know, teaching at our local synagogue. So, um just to start, if you don't mind, Rabbi, um, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about um, your background and what what are your credentials? So, first of all, Ryan, thank you for having me, and Bill, it's a pleasure to meet you. I, um, y- you know, my background is that I was raised an uh, Orthodox Jew, and over time, for many reasons, I wound up moving over to the conservative movement where I was ordained. But I've never been much into labels. I, you know, there are only 13 million Jews in the entire world. Yeah. Uh, to, to put it into perspective... There's three times as many American citizens living in the state of California as there are Jews in the entire world. Wow, that's amazing. That just, you know, kind of puts it into perspective, you you know, so you can start thinking in those terms. I think it's kind of funny when we in the Jewish community think of ourselves as a significant uh, number en masse to divide ourselves into our little sub So, uh, you wow. know, and we just don't have, we really don't have that look. Um, so in, in any case, that's, that's my background sort of in terms of my spiritual path. Um, you know, I, I was raised obviously in a, in a household that was very, very much in tune with the security needs and the spiritual needs of the Jewish people. And that has remained with me as a central cause in my life. And uh, I brought that to my rabbinate, to larger synagogue, smaller synagogue. Uh, at this point, it's, it's a delight to be able to come out to Havasu and and volunteer and share share my time as I can as I'm able yeah and uh, and that's how we met but exactly. I think the most interesting thing about our meeting is that it is on the back end of many many years of working with the Christian community in partnership related to Israel in particular right and to the future of of a moral and just society in general and what's interesting about that is it didn't come easily for me uh, you know I'm the child of a Holocaust survivor who fought in Israel's War of Independence right and wow. uh, you know I I, I am a uh, sort of a living remnant of Christian persecutions or Christian society's persecution and murder of Jews right. uh, for the wow, better part wow. of 2,000 years. So overcoming that meant two things. First was realizing that European Christianity and American Christianity are two very different things. Right. Uh, and, and, and understanding that over time and, and being taught that by wonderful Christian people who have shared their insights and their wisdom with, over the years. Um, and, 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 and really that experience together with an understanding that there are certain core values uh, that I guess as I get older too, I understand as Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, I was going to say we have, have a term. To guide. Yeah. Right, right. We, and and we, do, we have that term for a reason. Right. Um, there are essential values that our cultures and civilizations share uh, that frankly you don't find in most other cultures as a rooted idea in our society. Exactly. And I would say in our world as a whole. So, so because of those two factors, one being, you know, sort of a, a spiritual evolution to understanding the good cause concerning care of the Christian community that is not trying to evangelize or proselytize, but to support. Right. Um, which is a which is a and, major distinction because there are, of course, those Christian groups who, uh, you know, um, proclaim to be close to Israel and the Jewish people, and they are, but but with maybe an underlying motive, which is to, you know, convert and, and, and you know, bring over into Christianity. And, you know, you and I have known each other long enough that we're way past that, and that's that's not my heart. I do feel as a, as a Christian, you know, a Christian pastor, a Christian teacher, that, um, that I'm called by God, I'm required by God. Well, require is the wrong word. 
does it make because it makes it almost sound like I don't want to do this, but I really do. <laughs> to to you know, um, love Israel and love you know our Jewish brothers and sisters, and and just you know work together on that basis. And um, you know the the Jews have had a relationship with God that that goes back you know much further than the Christians have. And you know as Christians, we we see you know our covenant with God is kind of an extension uh, you know of the old covenant. You know you know that maybe well the, yeah because it says in the Bible you know we've been grafted in right right know, so um, I mean that's the way I look at it. We're part of Jewish um, yeah. heritage, but we don't have the, um, I guess, the history right. when it comes to, I mean, some Christians today are being persecuted. Don't get me wrong. You know, there's always been that since the day of Christ. Oh, but, sure. Yes. Um, when you go back thousands and thousands and thousands of years, um, the Jew, you know, the Jewish nation has been persecuted and um, killed for, you know, way longer yeah. and have had to endure um, being misplaced and, and scattered and just things that you wouldn't even think was possible right. today. And from an end times perspective, which is, you know, what this, what our show is about, right? Yes. Um, you know, that's, it's the same spirit that is after both Jews and Christians. And that's right. the spirit that we call the spirit of Antichrist, which we see so, so strong in the world today in the United States, you know, the Middle East, etc. But, um, you know, I, you know, Rabbi and I, we always kind of, or I joke with him, Rabbi, you and I are waiting for the same Messiah. We just don't agree yet on his name. <laughs> right? Well, I, you know, look, I, I think, I think, first of all, you have to remember, Judaism is a much more um, deed-based, pragmatic religion or religious culture than Christianity. Christianity is ultimately far more faith-based. Than Judaism. Yeah, true. Judaism. Judaism has faith. Judaism has faith parameters. Like I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way: If you're going to believe in God, believe in one of them. Yes. Uh, we don't believe that the Messiah has come. Right. right? Sure. That's the, the difference Messiah between Jews and come. Christians. And yeah. exactly. So they're fun. I can give you a few others, but there are fun. Like for instance, we do not believe that Jesus was born uh, of of a union between a deity, a God, and a human being. Hey, hey, Rabbi. That's they, it, 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 yeah. I mean, talk about. We're going to have to pause. We have right to take there. a break for a second. But yeah, talk about like. A <laughs> but we want to continue that uh, line of thought. Uh, we'll be right back with Rabbi Isaac, uh, Pastor Ryan, and myself on your Celebration Radio Network. Our number is 800 721 9313. You're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network. Pastor Ryan and I are in the studio this morning, and we're talking with Rabbi Isaac from California, in Los Angeles, California. And uh, we are so privileged to have him on the air with us. Rabbi, you were talking about uh, the difference between uh, what uh, Christians believe as is the Messiah and what Jews believe. Uh, why don't you continue right, that train so, of thought? So thank thank you again, Bill. I I, I just I, I don't want to make this the topic of our conversation today. Right, of course. Well, well, theology is interesting. There are other pressing issues as well to discuss, but but let me let me just say this. I think it is important that we understand theological similarities, religious and faith similarities. I think it's even more important. The most important kind of interfaith dialogue on a faith level is to understand our differences. Because that's actually where you learn more about people. I agree. Yes, yeah, same in here. our differences, and then, and then, and then being able to tolerate those differences and even champion that's, them. That's the key. Creates a you know a good pluralistic society. Yeah. Um, now th- there's there's one thing I will say though, and this this is why the partnership between Jews and Christians, a sincere partnership recognizing similarities, is important. Because if you do this with every group, you will find certain differences that are incompatible. Right. The difference between whether Jesus was the Messiah or whether Someone else is going to be the Messiah. And what the Messiah precisely does or doesn't, those differences are not the differences that are going earth-shattering. They'll be one way or the other. We'll find out in course. We're all going to find out. But, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, but, one day. But when you're, right, right. We will. But but in the meantime, there are certain other religions that are that hold values and, and believe in certain practices that are simply antithetical to the Judeo-Christian way. 100%. And we're, and we're talking about uh, and, Islam, and, and just to be Blunt. Right. Yeah. Well, the, to, to be blunt, I think there are others, by the way, in the world that that pose different challenges. Well, I, Islam, ideologies like like you know um, radical liberalism, like we're seeing in the United States now, which you know is sort of a religion unto itself. Well, I think that's one example. I think that there are issues with Buddhism. I don't think that they're the same kinds of issues as Islam. They're not about life and death issues as much as they are about larger spiritual issues. Sure. But okay, right. we can, reincarnation. We, can, we, and so we, forth. we are very different societies. That, <laughs> yeah. 
that yes. have evolved from thousands and thousands of years uh, of partition and distance. So that's understandable. With Islam, it's a little different, and it has to do with how we view submission and how we view subordination in our society. Right. Also, how we view peace. The Judeo-Christian notion of peace, and it really comes from Judaism's notion, of, is one of wholeness and harmony. The word Islam, the very word, means to submit. Submission, yeah. Right, so we're talking about a totally different notion of salam, of peace, as right. opposed to shalom in Hebrew. Salam is based upon a notion of conquering and causing submission. Shalom is based upon an ideal of everybody understanding one another, accepting one another, and finding ways to live together in harmony. Right. They're two, they're two radically different concepts, and I think that's what brings us into the world that we live today with the unholy alliance between a far left in Western civilization and the most radical right in Islamic civilization, both having in common the idea that they're willing to suppress cause to submit anybody who doesn't agree with them. Right, yeah. That's where, so if one is wondering how is it that the far left of Western civilization and the farthest right of Islamic society wind up together, that's what they have in common. Not so much what they believe in yeah. as the means for getting people to believe the way they... Yeah, fascinating. That's the issue. Yeah. And, and that's an important... You know, one has to understand that because otherwise one misses what is so dangerous about that toxic alliance that's occurred in our society. Right. Right, right. And, right, and, and that's, uh, the irony is, you know, for all of the radicalization that the, the left claims the right perpetrates, a sponsor of, if you look at it, you really find right-wing groups that are suppressing the speech that's allowed to be spoken by people on the left. But mm. on the left, find this incredible suppression of speech, desire to have everybody bend to their will. This is not American idealism. Exactly. This is something born of socialism, and it's born of radical Islam, and it's it yeah, I love how, destroy I, our society. Yes, I love how you relate this to radical Islam. I, you know, I 100% do. Bill and I both do. But, uh, you know, again, so our, our Friday morning program here on, you know, Your Celebration Radio Network, this is about the end times. And I mean, you know, what, what you're talking about here, Rabbi, this is really how we describe the, the context of this great end times war that we're now in. And it really does come down to that. Jews and Christians have to come together in this time because because it's kind of like us against the world, so yeah. to speak. Yeah. And and I just, you know, par, you know, a huge part of my ministry in my heart and Bill, too, is trying to get that message out to our fellow Christians that this is the relationship that we need to have with our Jewish brothers and sisters with the nation of Israel. One hundred percent. Yes. And, and, you know, and again, it's... You you know, yes, there's differences, you know, and ev- I think everybody knows what the core differences are between Jews and Christians. Um, God calls us to come above that and be beyond that. And, you know, the last book of, of the New Testament, which I know isn't in your Bible, Rabbi, but, you know, <laughs> but um, the, the last, you know, book of our, you know, our Bible, you know, the Christian Bible, uh, the book of Revelation, it describes in many different ways Jews and Christians coming together and acting as one in the last of the last days. So, um, so again, just, you know, love having you on this uh, program. This we're, we're we're demonstrating this for real as we talk here. So. Well, we, well, <laughs> what we are. It's interesting because I think we're having two different experiences, and it's okay. See, as a Jew, I'm really not focused on the end of times. Oh, yeah, are, I know. We talked, right? yeah. Not, no, but it's, I think it's important that, that listeners hear this. Yes. From my perspective, um, I don't know that we're at the end of time, and I don't know that it matters. What I know that matters is that when different groups who have a common history and, and, and a common intellectual history and spiritual history that now goes back thousands of years, Christians linking back through Jewish history, right? So, so when, when different groups have such ties, such binds, how we see the present moment is less important than how we understand ourselves through the longer progression of time. So whether or not this moment is a precipitating end of days, or whether it's one more link in a chain of, of days that, God willing, will go on for a long, long, long time. There is a moment that will define the future. Who wins the future? What spiritual guidance will be our light heading in future? Whether it's dark and, and, and really destructive, or whether mm. light, informative, and uplifting. And, and, and Rabbi, that's, that a, that's a perfect... Defined now, yeah. That moment, hang on, that moment is defined now, not as much because of what we want as because of what our enemies want. 
right? Oh, yeah, and that's they, good. they are pushing it, which means we are compelled to respond together and with yes. our greatest strength. Amen. Amen to that. And at that, we're going to go to another break, uh, Rabbi yeah, Isaac. And uh, it has sure been a pleasure talking with you this morning. You're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network, uh, The Coming Kingdom with Bill and Ryan. And uh, our guest today is Rabbi Isaac uh, Jarrett mm-hmm. from Los Angeles, California. And uh, we will continue our conversation with him in just a little bit. We'll be right back. Our phone number is 1-800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. You're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network with Bill and Ryan uh, speaking with uh, pa- uh, Pastor, <laughs> I'm sorry, Rabbi sorry, the Jewish pastor. Isaac uh, Jarrett from Los Angeles, California. And uh, uh, you were um, talking in the last segment, and I wanted to give you a chance to finish that up before I ask you this next question. Sure, sure. Thank you, Bill. And, and Ryan, again, it's so great to be here with you. I, um, look, let me put it to you this way. I don't want anybody to misunderstand. I don't mean to denigrate anyone's faith, God forbid, for believing that it is the end of days or that the end of days can be approaching. Yeah. It, it, within Judaism, it's just more a matter of that not mattering as much. It's not a central concern of daily life. Yeah. It's a, it, it has been a central concern during eras. Like when for 2,000 years we couldn't return to the land of Israel except for those who were already living there or in small numbers. We yearned for the return, and that was a messianic yearning. Sure. It still exists, but it's not a daily thing of God, the Messiah has to come right now. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's never been that way except for, you know, very unique moments in Jewish history, usually terrible times. Right. But, yeah. but my, my point in saying all of this is, uh, here, I'll give you a great example. If you go to evangelic funeral, uh, often what you'll see is a celebration of a person's reunion with mm. the Holy One of Blessing, right? Returning True, to a right? better place. Yeah. You will almost never, ever see that in a Jewish funeral. I, I, in fact, in all of my years, I don't recall ever being at a funeral, certainly never officiating at a funeral where that is a central theme. What, what's, because, what's the theme? Well, the theme is lost. Because yeah. in this world, this is the world that matters most to us as Jews. Yeah, we are wow. this worldly focused, so it's about loss. Whatever happens in another realm happens in another realm. It's neither here nor there. But in this world, we're experiencing what's happening here. So it, it is it is a fundamental difference. You know, we're, we're going to have you back uh, for future we shows. Definitely we definitely have to. Discuss cause... this during the break. And I just yeah. this one topic, Rabbi, we, we have to yeah, delve sure. into. I love this. Yes, yes. But in um, the meantime, we, we just had a recent election here in the United States. That's right. And, uh, and, and talking about us working together as Jews and Christians. Bill, do you have a question for that? Yeah. Um, <laughs> have you accepted that Joe Biden may have won this election? Or are you holding out hope that Trump's legal team uh, will produce enough evidence to give Trump the win? So, so first of all, let me say this. I know that we're dividing you know, this interview, this conversation uh, into segments. So just understand, we can start this segment now, but we're going to go on through at least another couple of segments. Oh, oh that's that's try to answer this. this it's the rest because, of our interview, Rabbi. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so important. It, it, oh, man. But, but, but understand why. Because the first question is, why does it matter? Right. And it ma- right. right. So the, at That's the heart good. of it, let's leave aside who won or who might have won for the moment. Let's talk about why it matters. Good. In terms of our own country, we have a fundamental choice to make as a society, which is whether it matters to be American anymore. This is, yes, this has religious uh, elements to, to the discussion in terms of whether one is God fearing or whether one is, uh, you know, participating in worship or in study and the like. Okay, that's fine. But there's an even broader question than that, which is, does it matter to be a particular anything anymore, or should we just be part of a civilization, a society, a, a citizenship of the entire world? Let's just be globalists. Let's open our borders. Let's not be Americans anymore. <laughs> yeah. That's one side of the argument. Right. That really is. That's what it boils it down to. Yes. And, and not only that, if you listen to what they're saying, they're actually saying it. So this is not just like some sort of idea. Oh, no, we're not reading into it. They're saying it. They're saying it. So that's the first thing. What's the opposite? The opposite choice to say, you know what? We're actually better. We are actually worthy as a society. The notion that the individual matters as much as the majority and that there's safeguards for both is uniquely American. True. Is it born yes. of a Judeo-Christian heritage? Yes, but you'll find no country in the world, not one country in the world, that champions that value of the individual more than America or in ways as nuanced as America. Exactly. We are an amazing, amazing, divinely inspired society that is unique. It deserves protection. Americanism is important and Americans are important. So now you have, that is the great 
elitist divide yeah. between the two sides. Very now, well put. There are extremely well there are, put. There are, there, are, there are other issues that that matter, but it can almost all be subsumed under those two issues. Now, I'll also say this: the question is whether we are so immature that we need to be loved by the world, or whether <laughs> we're mature enough to simply care that we're respected. I'd rather that we are respected by our neighbors in the world, and that they understand our boundaries and limits, than that we are loved because we have no boundaries and limits. And and when we approach the world like that, you're you're, you're really talking about the difference between the the Obama administration and the Trump administration. I mean, I mean that's what I'm what I'm hearing. Yes. Anyways. And and yeah. When, I, I, I mean, I'd go back even to some extent to the well, well, sure, Bush yeah. administration versus the Bush administration, but certainly right now, looking at what, what I'll call O'Biden, because I see it as one thing. It is, This yeah. O'Biden thing is one mm-hmm. thing. And, and President Trump, who, you know, here's the great thing about President Trump that I think, you know, he actually does what he believes. He yeah. actually says what he believes. We're yeah. so unused to that, right? Right. It's so uncommon for us that we, we still kind of look at that and say, what, does he, does he really mean that? Well, yes, he does. He actually says what he means, unlike oh, yeah. all these other folks in Washington who could care less yeah. Whether you believe them or not, in the long run, they only want your vote in the short run. Yeah, sure. And that's politicians. Right. Trump is very Trump much not a politician. Yes. Amen Trump to that. Didn't run. He didn't run to get elected. He ran to make a difference. Right. That's very different. That, that is, is. exactly. And, yeah. And, and, and you know, so, the, so this, in this, America, this in, in America, I think that this this actually shows through with regard to our relationship with China. I think about this. Think about this on election night when it looked as though the president was going to have enough votes to win the. Chinese stock market was crashing. <laughs> Suddenly, yeah. when all these millions of votes appeared for, for Biden overnight, the Chinese stock market was doing well. Yeah, well, go figure. Why Why is it that Iranians are happy that Biden, apparently, so it appears anyway, yeah. won, uh, and, and and they were worried that Trump would win? Well, you, you sometimes just got to look at your enemies. Oh, yeah, who's, who's you, your enemy supporting? You that's good or bad in your society. Yeah. I mean, if, so, if so they love you... Biden, that should give us pause. Because of appeasement, yeah, and, and and your point about you know uh, when America you know is caring about what the what rest of the world is thinking about us do they like us versus just taking that responsibility of, of being a strong nation looking after what I notice is that things not only go better for America under administration like like you know Trump um, but better for the whole world yeah, the whole world is, is safer yeah. and more secure and more prosperous when very much when so. we take responsibility as the dominant world power and don't just you know bow down to everybody hoping that they you know like us so right so with, with that we're going to go to another break. And uh, we are speaking with Rabbi Isaac from Los Angeles, California this morning on The Coming Kingdom with uh, Bill and Ryan. Uh, you're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network. The phone number 800-721-9313. That's 800-721-9313. Okay, so we are back with uh, my very good friend and Bill's uh, new very good friend, Rabbi Isaac <laughs> Jarrett from the Los Angeles area. So Rabbi, again, thank you so much for joining us. It's just uh, what, what an honor and privilege to have you here with us. Um, Likewise. Your, your Likewise. knowledge your wisdom and uh, and again this is about Christians and Jews uh, coming together like like the word you know uh, commands us to in these last days and fighting against the the you know the powers that are trying to you know take over this world which I which I call the spirit of Antichrist you know Bill and I um, so I have a question for you which which is right along the lines of what we've been discussing um, rabbi you're an American Jew and even more than that you're a reform rabbi if I'm saying that correctly living in Los Angeles of all places uh, you are supposed to I think it's like California state law, you're supposed to be a liberal, you're supposed to vote Democrat. <laughs> Why are you a conservative? Okay, so first of all, just to clarify something, I'm a conservative rabbi. That's right, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm not a reform, it's okay. I'm going to cha- um, change that my note here. <laughs> I, I also have a real problem with the denomination as a whole, and with 13 million Jews, I think it's enough to say I'm an authentic Jewish rabbi. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> yeah. uh, when, when we're up to 150 million, God willing, which would still be like, you know, a mere pittance of the world's population percentage of the world's population, then we can start talking about what denomination... Which I, I love how you but, don't like the denomination. I agree with you. We have that in Christianity, too, and we kind of have yeah. the luxury, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do have the luxury, but but I, and, and sometimes those you know distinctions are important, too. But in, in our case, uh, when we're looking at the world and its perils of the moment, I think we don't have that luxury. Yeah. I, I, I will say this, just to, to move back to the previous question, and then I'll, I'll sort of update uh, to where we are now Sounds in good. your current question. Um, Look, the world is a complicated place. 
with many divergent ideas, but the issue isn't simply one of what works practically and what doesn't. The reason that these societies, especially China and Russia and and, uh, and Iran and North Korea, are looking at Biden and, uh, and 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 seeing opportunity in their view, isn't simply because he's weak or because he's a globalist. It's because he's corrupt. Hmm. I mean, yeah, let's wow. be real about this. Yeah, let's be real about. I, he might be a very nice man. I'm not. I, I don't know him personally. This is not a comment on him and his as as an individual. Yeah, can, can you can you be both? Life. And yeah, it's it's such a great right. point. You can corrupt and nice. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and, and this is a man. I mean, unfortunately, he benefits from this incredible, scandalous solidarity of the left wing liberal media, which With is China. which yeah. is really taking over media. Oh, yeah. all media at this point. Um, and, and, and and here we have a situation where this is a corrupt man, and our enemies know that they can own him. Yeah. And the irony is that they the, probably the narrative do. that's out <laughs> yeah. there the narrative that's out there is that our current president is actually owned by them, which is sick nonsense. Yeah, precise precisely the opposite mm-hmm. is true. Nonsense. Yeah. So, I mean Isn't that amazing? Here, here's what we have. We have a moment where, where the truth is being totally, completely stood on its head and a falsehood is being propagated as given truth from God, and the world is believing it, more particularly our society is. As far as the issue of end of day, I think that the issue is less, for me again, less an issue of whether we're talking about all of this in the context of the end of days, or whether we're uh, speaking about it in terms of the ability for Judeo-Christian society to continue to thrive. Yeah. Because if we have one or two more generations of this leftist sanity in Western civilization, I don't know where our voices are going to be left to be able to be heard right there's going to be no space for them and to me that you know so, this this is the end time story it's it's you know you know who's going to triumph and and uh unfortunately the, the story according to you know the book revelation etc is that evil does and will triumph uh pretty dramatically for a brief time but but that doesn't mean that we stop the fight and in the end uh we do win you know M- messiah is so Coming or coming and, and, back, whatever the case, you know, whatever. And within Judaism, <laughs> there are there are multiple views of when the Messiah would come, when Mashiach, as we call it, Mashiach, would come, yeah. um, and what Mashiach would do or not do, and whether it would happen as the result of bad events or good events. And I would go. The difference is that for you, Ryan, and this is you know, this goes back to three years of conversation. I know, I know. yeah, great conversation. <laughs> that kinda... is that is a central feature of the moment. For me, it's a byproduct of the moment. Yeah, we're always one press of a nuclear uh, button away from the annihilation of the world got I know. Right? It's true. So so if you think of it in those terms, it's always there. But the other part of it is Absolutely. even if it weren't there, I think we'd still have these challenges. Because these challenges are fundamentally about what's fair and reasonable and champions the individual and understands that decency is important in a society. Just interpersonal decency instead of lies and manipulation which the left is propagating for years and gets worse and worse just look at AOC yeah I think this yeah. but there's another another way to, to sort of understand how bad and how dangerous a Biden presidency will be if God forbid it goes that way and the way to look at it is our imprint on the world so how is it that Eastern Europe and Western Europe are going to be protected from an expansionist uh, Russia that wants to return to its glory of the Soviet Union yeah um, how how is East Africa going to be protected from having all of its natural resources bought out and owned by China and Iran, Mm -hmm. which is what's happening on a daily basis. Um, Are we going to actually hold the front line of Western civilization against an Eastern world of fascism and tyranny that springs forth from radical Islam? That front line, by the way, is the Western Wall in Jerusalem. That front line, by the way, between these two civilizations is the border going into Bethlehem, which has all but been taken over yeah. by radical Islamists who have thrown out almost all the Christians who live there. Oh, yeah. Bethlehem used to be an 80% Christian town. It's now over 90% Muslim. You know, last, last, last time I, last I was... last 25 years. Yeah, last time I was there, which was 2017, I drove into downtown Bethlehem by myself and the sun was going down. And I mean, it, it, I just felt the danger and I literally turned around and went back out. <laughs> Bethlehem's uh, become know, I, a I scary place. And I'm a Christian. I, I had the... Pri- 
privilege of speaking in, in I want to say it's 2007 or 2008, at the First Baptist Church in Bethlehem. Wow. Uh, Pastor Naeem Khoury, and I, I hope he is blessed and well and healthy. Still, he invited me, and, and uh, you know, I, I went there. And, and, and Jews, the Jews aren't even really supposed to go into Bethlehem. I think that's kind of like no, no, not I allowed. No, no, I had to go in with the special security. That's, I was going to say, yeah, uh, wow. wow. Yeah, and, 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 I, and when I went in, I, you know, I got a, a tour of all of Bethlehem, um, again, with, with the security detail. And, oh, yeah. And then went to speak at the church and saw what had been done to this beautiful, safe place. Uh, it's, it's just, it's, it's tragic, it's heartbreaking. And that is but the line. that is the front line. These are the front lines of our civilization against an expansionist ideology that hates us. Yeah. And are we going to stand up to that? Now, President Trump... Hey, Rab- Rabbi, real quick, hold that thought. Yeah, we're we're going to take a break. We're going to go to another break, but hold that thought. Okay. <laughs> and uh, we'll continue you your train of thought here in just a moment. You're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network. Bill and Ryan uh, talking with Rabbi Isaac from Los Angeles, California, and his experience in Bethlehem. We'll get to that coming up in just a few minutes. one 800 is the number to dial, 800-721-9313. You're tuned into your Celebration Radio Network. Good morning to all of you that are joining us. Uh, Pastor Ryan is in the studio with me, and uh, we have Rabbi Isaac on the phone with us, and uh, he was talking about his experience in Bethlehem uh, in, uh, what what'd you say, 2007? 2008. 2008? Yeah, 2007, 2000. I think it was the summer of 2007, if I'm oh, not okay. mistaken. Uh, but but it, it, it may have been the winter of 2007. It's a long time ago, longer than <laughs> <Yeah>. I did. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. Uh, but but it, it, listen, what I'll tell you is this, and this is perhaps what was most amazing about that experience. Um, I had women telling me the horrifying stories of what they've experienced. I had gentlemen, you know, who were heads of families coming up to me and telling me how they were literally, they literally had their homes confiscated then by Islamic authority as soon as Israel pulled out of administering that area as part of the Oslo Accord. Well, Israel pulled out because Palestinians said they were going to govern, and the people who were hurt most were the Christians, and Israel can't go in. If Israel went back into Bethlehem today, we'd have the international community screaming that Israel was inciting a holy war. Of course. But if it did so, it would only be doing that to protect the Christians that are left. Who are very very persecuted there, yeah. Yeah, It's it's insane. But but I, I think I think that what we don't understand our society is that what President Trump has done is he's redrawn that battlefront. And he said, you know what, Israel, we have your back. We understand that you have our back. We understand that you're on that front line. We'd rather that front line stay there or that you start winning and pushing it back, yeah. right? Rather than having that front line uh, on the shores of the Atlantic Ocean facing our own country. That's right. the first thing. The, the second thing is a spiritual bond. Look, you want to know which two countries in the world have the most in common as freedom-loving people? It's the United States and it's Israel. These are two exactly. places where people gathered who who were remnants of themselves because they had so little left but went for one last shot at hope. And you know what? Two countries that have flourished because of that. God has blessed us both, Israel and the United States, because of sincerity with which we arrived yeah. and with which our purpose is blessed. It is honest. It is decent. It is God-loving. Yeah, thank you for making Two that connection. Faiths. Yes, I mean, exactly. That spiritual important. connection. God, ble- God yeah. blesses both nations because of our relationship. Absol- absolutely so important. Yeah. Now, what President Trump did was simply said the truth. He simply said, hey, look. We've tried, what, 60 years, 70 years of peacemaking, viewing the Palestinians as an injured party when they're a persecuting party. And, and you know what? It's gotten us nowhere. Right. So President Trump went and said, let's, let's, instead of making the Palestinians the center of this, since they're not being helpful or cooperative in any way, For decades. let's put yeah. them on the periphery. Right. Right. We're talking about almost, if we're talking about the better part of a hundred years that hasn't worked because of them, put them on the periphery. Let's make peace between Israel and everybody else who's willing to do so. And you know what? When you do that, you isolate Iran and you put the Palestinians in a position where they know they better show up at the table at some point soon or the table will be gone. Well, I, and I, but That's, I, I unfortunately, I, I think that what's happened with the Palestinians is that they decided just to just to dig their heels in and wait until Trump is out of office, and then they That's they're why. assuming that they're going to get a Democrat next, and they'll be that Democrat will be along the lines of President Obama, and they'll appease well, well, the Palestinians. Well, so far, it looks you know. like they may have they may have gotten their wish, but they may maybe not have. we don't we don't they know yet. Not have. Yeah, listen. It, uh, in terms of Israel and in terms of, of, of President Trump, Israel's future, understand this. The people in the Obama administration hated Israel with a passion. 
But they didn't make it look that way to the average American. They were very of good course, the yeah, same they way. They're very good now yeah. at hiding all the reforms they want to do in the uh, under the veil of COVID. Right. They had they they <laughs> did a great job. You have to understand this nuance. One of the ways that you can destroy Israel if you're an American who really hates Israel, but without stirring up American opposition, is you say we are giving Israel every security need fulfilled. We are giving them every gun, every missile, every anti missile. You name it. We're giving it to them. We're yeah. not even selling it to them. We're giving it to them. But you know what? Israel, you can only use it the way we say. Right. And then we go to the United Nations and we do something that undermines all of Israel's security, which is we withhold our ability to veto uh, vote at yeah. the United Nations Security Council like Obama did at the end of his presidency. Yeah, that, that was... Uh, what matters is this. Yes. The most important support that the United States gives Israel is not military support. It is diplomatic support. If the United States... And that's what Obama withdrew as the first president who ever did that to Israel. Yeah. In a systematic way, he did it with intention. He did it by getting the Egyptians to actually sponsor a Security Council resolution that would condemn settlement building and demand freezes and the like, yeah. and define what constitutes kind of settlement. And then he had America abstain with one month left to his president. Which, which we had veto power. We could have stopped that. And that was the first time in, in history that, that the United it's, States it's more, didn't veto it's more an than anti. That we, it, it is, but it's yeah. more than that we could have stopped it. President Obama and his team urged the Egyptians oh, they did. I think, I think they actually, them yeah. in, into actually stating that resolution and putting it forward. We did more than just... Oh, yeah. No, I read that Obama sent his own... ...the whole process. Yeah, Obama sent his but, own team over there to, to actually pin this resolution. So, yeah, he, he, exactly. he was... That was a Security Council Resolution 2334, if anyone wants to uh, look that up. And, and uh, yes, Obama let that pass through uh, one month, almost to the day before he was out of office. Just a final little, like, stick it to Prime Minister Netanyahu. But who it's, it's much more than that. Like, <laughs> you know. it's, it's more than a stick it. He was setting a precedent for, and really a, a roadmap, for how to destroy the state of Israel if you're an American leader. Wow. If you really want to destroy the, the state of Israel, keep sending them all the arms in the world, and then tie their hands so that they can't use them. Yeah. That's, that's the way you do it. You say, well, diplomatically, we need even-handed approach. We need to be honest brokers. The cycle of violence needs to be broken. Those are all the spin words. Going back, by the way, even to the Bush administration, not the Obama, but it wasn't as bad during Bush. It was much worse during Clinton. If you go back and you see those catchphrases, they are all part of diplomatic abandonment of the state of Israel that the left is undergoing right. and propagating. Hey, and that's hey, why President Trump was so different and so important, and we cannot cannot allow that spirit to be lost. I agree. We, we have to take another break, but when we come back, I, we want to hear your uh, concerns about a potential Biden administration vis-a-vis -vis Israel. So you're tuned in to your Celebration Radio Network. We're uh, speaking with Rabbi Isaac from Los Angeles, California this morning. Our phone number is 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. This is Bill, the phone number 800-721-9313. Your chance to win, well, this uh, should give it away, Pastor Ryan, but I'm going to play this here for the people. <laughs> yeah, I've this, been playing this, it all week. This is a hand. Brace yeah. yourselves. Here we go. B, caller number five, right now and win your free turkey. 1-800-721-9313. 1-800-721-9313. 1-800-721-9313. One eight hundred seven two one nine three one three, and good luck. Well, good luck to everyone out there. And not only will you be winning um, the turkey gift card for twenty five dollars, but uh, because we also Thanksgiving have, is next week. Yeah, can you believe that? It's oh, less man. than a week it, away it, already. Yeah. Um, the, year, the year's almost over. I know. It's and crazy. was I saying during the 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 break there that. I, I almost want to say, oh, good, 2020. But we don't know what 2021 has in store. <laughs> right. Hey, it's the last days, man. <laughs> yes, right? Anything can happen. <laughs> uh, these final days, part one and part two, will also be part of the prize. So, again, be caller number five this morning at 800-721-9313, 1-800-721-9313. We'd love to uh, give this stuff away for, uh, to our caller five. Yeah, that's all you got to do. You don't need to answer no questions no, today, Pastor no, Ryan. No hoops to jump just, through. Just dial yeah, your phone. Just dial your yeah. phone. So. And again, so you win, you win the turkey gift card plus uh, part one and part two of my These Final Days yes. book series. And by the way, part three is coming soon. For real now, because I, I just, this week or last week actually, I've wrapped up uh, the last new section of the book. Really? So I'm back to just doing my final edit. And then, yeah, awesome. so, so oh. coming soon, TM. 
Yeah. There's our yeah. first caller. <laughs> 1-800-721-9313. They hung up. <laughs> well, try again. 1-800-721-9313. <laughs> yeah, you know, they, they are, um, they, they've been doing this all week to me. You know, they'll... They'll wait and wait and wait, and then everybody calls at once. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's uh, once we get that first caller in, then usually every line is lit up. Yeah, so, we, we keep it exciting. So, yeah. right on. 1 800 721 9313 is the number to dial this morning. Good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Who's this? My name is Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Where are you calling from today? White Mountain. White Mountains, your caller number one, okay? Try again. Try again. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Who's this? This is Linda from the White Mountains also. All right, cool. Linda, you're caller number two. I'll try back. Thank you. You're very okay. welcome. Good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Who's this? Good morning. This is Victoria. Hi, Christina Victoria. Valley, number uh, three. Yep, number three. You have been so close <laughs> Wait, all week. And Victoria, where are you calling from? Chino Valley. Chino oh, Valley. Chino, oh, nice. Okay. We'll yeah, your number, yeah, I'm your the number one three. that you gave the books to, yeah. Yeah, I know. We'll oh, I remember, the books. yes. Yeah. Okay. But she's won that DVD. turkey gift card. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> well, um, uh, okay. Miss Debbie will be giving one away this afternoon, so so listen for that opportunity, okay? Okay, great. Thank you. You're very God welcome. God bless you guys. God, God bless, bless you. Bye-bye. Good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Who's this? This is John over in Tucum, Kerry. Hey, John Ooh, in Tucum, Kerry. You are calling number four. I almost made it. So yep. close. So close. Tried this afternoon. Yep. <laughs> All right. Talk to you guys later. Have God a good bless. day. You, you too. too. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. See, I told you every line lit up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Right? Isn't that something? That's good. <laughs> good morning, your Celebration Radio Network. Who's this? Oh, no, this is Martha from the White Mountains. Hiya, Martha. How you doing? Hi. I'm doing very well today. It's beautiful here. Not oh, too cold. Not Good. too cold today. You're not wrapped up in blankets and and uh, everything, huh? Doing well? Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> it is It is the White Mountains after all, yeah. 40, de- yeah, 40 degrees. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be freezing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, us uh, desert people have that thinner blood. And, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. But, it's It's uh, been nice here, like 80 degrees yesterday, I think, or something. Yeah. So, yeah, un- unusual nice. for this time of year, but we're not complaining. So Nope, not at all. No Summer snow. weather. Yeah, yeah. I was a desert rat for about 45 or 50 years, and then I came up here we're, now we're, I wear three layers of clothing. <laughs> right, yeah. I would never get used to it. Oh, wow. Where, where did you live before? You said you were a desert rat. Um, I live south of Tucson. Oh, okay. What, what south town? South of Tucson. Wow. Sarita. Okay, I know. Sarita, yeah, I, I went okay. to school at uh, U of A in Tucson. I was there for a few years. So, yeah, my wife and I would drive around down south and explore. So, yeah, I, I, I'm, I've I been to that town. So. All right. So, you've probably hiked in Madera Canyon, done Mount Yes, Rice exactly. That's, I was trying to think what was around there. Yeah, yeah. I remember those days. I was 20-something years ago now, but, yep. Oh, Pastor Ryan. Oh, you like Mount it, Rice, and you need to come up to the White Mountains and just stay here, because if my mom wasn't down south, I wouldn't go down. I would just go east and west, because it's just too beautiful up here. It's, it's beautiful, yeah. Yeah, we've traveled up there. We've been to Hannigan Meadow and Springerville and, you know, Pine Top and all that. Okay. That's that's White Mountains, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and yep. I'm actually just out. I'm just... You're east of Pine Top? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, on, two, on 260 up there? Top. Highway 260, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I used to drive an ice truck up there, actually. I used to deliver ice to, way back in the day. Deliver to the ice? Eskimo deliver ice, ice. yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I drove an ice truck, yep. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? In the White Mountains. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, congratulations, Martha. You have won the, the turkey gift card as well as the books, so... That's, that's, that's why we're keeping so you on the air for so long. Yes, you're yeah. the winner. Yeah, you're the ding, winner. Ding, ding. You're <laughs> caller number five. So I'm going to put you on hold. We'll get your info from you. All right. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay. God bless. God bless. Well, congratulations to Martha from the White Mountains this morning. She has won the turkey gift card as well as these final days, part one and part two. Which, by the way, if anyone is interested in my book series, uh, you can find them at Amazon.com. It's these final days by uh, Ryan Speakman. Or go to my website, thesefinaldays.org. Yeah, get those. Uh, you even have a Kindle version. 
Uh, yeah, there's Kindle. Right. Um, if you have Kindle Unlimited, you can re- read my books for free. Otherwise, they're uh, 99 cents on Kindle. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, we're going to play some music while we talk to Martha and get her information to mail this stuff out to her. Now, again, Miss Debbie will be giving away a turkey gift card as well today. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Casting Crowns would start right here is coming up next on your Celebration Radio Network. 1-800-721-9313 is the number to dial for that prayer request. The phone number again for prayer is 800-721-9313. 1-800-721-9313. I want to say again, congratulations to Martha in Pine Top for winning this morning. She won these final days, part one and two, and our turkey gift card. Now, again, Miss Debbie will be giving away a Thanksgiving meal on your Celebration Radio Network. So you want to make sure you stay tuned for that. Those that have won a turkey gift card this week have been entered in for that drawing. Well, nine minutes after, almost ten minutes after the hour on your Celebration Radio Network, Pastor Ryan is in the studio with me this morning. And uh, wow, what a fantastic conversation we were having with uh, Rabbi Isaac. Yeah, just... We had to kind of cut short. We'll continue that conversation in the next uh, show that we do. So right, so, so uh, next, next Friday is Thanksgiving, of course, yes. Thanksgiving weekend. And then uh, the Friday after that, so two weeks from today, we'll be, we'll be back here again to do our morning show. And we're going to have uh, Rabbi Isaac Jarrett back on with us. And we're going to, um, you know, like like you just said, Bill, continue this conversation. But, yeah, what what an amazing man. I mean, just, oh, I just mesmerizing. I, I love to hear him speak. So um, I consider myself a very strong, you know, conservative and, and strong convictions. I just don't even compare to Rabbi Jarrett. <laughs> he's just, yeah, he's an amazing guy. So Yeah, very much so. And thank you for uh, bringing him into our circle. Yeah, um, yeah. Really so, appreciate it. And and uh, you and I and 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 the rabbi have been you know talking off the air that uh, that that he loves what we're doing here, and I think that you know he's going to be a regular feature of our of our show going forward. And I love it because it's it's the Jewish perspective, and right. and not just you know I have a lot of Jewish friends, but this is actually a, a very prominent um, conservative uh, rabbi. That's the the movement of of Judaism. He's not Orthodox. He's not Reform. He's conservative. That's kind of right in the middle, but. Um, his father, as he mentioned, actually uh, sur- is a survivor. survivor. Of the Hol- yeah. yeah, so so he was in the Mothausen, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, um, uh, Nazi death camp and was actually liberated at the end of World War II by, by U.S. armed forces. A lot of the camps were liberated by the Soviets, but he actually was one of the ones, you know, liberated by the Americans. And then his father went on to fight in the uh, Israel War of Independence. 1948 Just a couple 19- years later <laughs> right so yeah. so rabbi jared uh you know our friend isaac um he he really you know is tuned into to the history of the jewish people including that that horrible dark period right. in, our, in our very recent history so uh very sensitive to you know um uh you know how christianity plays into this story and 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 that's one thing that um that i love about him is that he's like he said he's gotten over uh, the the you know um, bad feelings that any Jew would naturally have you know um, the relations between Christians and Jews for many many centuries and w- we are in the last days so we are called in this generation to overcome that yeah and to come together as Jews and Christians so so this is this is I just believe God's looking down and, and is very very happy to see the effort that that we're making to um, to to mend those ties and come together as uh, like Paul calls us the one new man in the last days, mm-hmm. Jews and Christians yeah. coming together. I, I made the joke early on, you know, that I've always teased him about. I tease all my Jewish friends, hey, we're actually waiting for the same Messiah. We just don't agree on his name yeah. at the moment, right? <laughs> but Paul says in Romans chapter 11 that in the end, all Jews will be saved. Uh, even in Daniel, the Old Testament, part of the Jewish Bible, right? Uh, the archangel Gabriel prophesied to Daniel that that in the in the very end of the end time so the last seven years what we call the great tribulation that that period will conclude with the jews finally anointing the most holy so as christians we interpret this as as yeshua jesus the messiah right yeshua yes. hamashiach um so you know again it, it really is true it's not just a joke we really are waiting for the same messiah and in the meantime um we we've got to work together and yes, love each other support yeah. each other so so just uh, love to well, have those that love Israel. You know, God blesses, and it's true. If we want the blessing on our country. We need to love Israel. We have to, and and this is so much part of the end time story. So next time we that we come together, um, we're going to uh, have uh, the rabbi back on a uh, little bit more discussion, and then you and I are going to get into our next topic here on this show, right. which is the role of the United States in the end time story. 
and and it's it's really a dual role. It's kind of like half for righteousness sake and half for unrighteousness. You and I, fortunately, are on the right side of this, yes. right? And our listeners too. But um, but America has such a prominent role to play in the end time story, and it's all about us uh, supporting Israel to the extent that we're going to actually invade northern Israel and militarily confront the Antichrist and his armies during you know the last half of the seven year Great Tribulation. And we're going to um, have an active role in in rescuing and protecting the Jews from the Antichrist. So um, this story that's beginning just now in our generation, Jews and Christians coming together, it's going to manifest in a very dramatic way right. in time soon coming. Yeah. So uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, It's going to be exciting. It is. Uh, thank you, Pastor Ryan, for being here this morning. I really appreciate it. And uh, for introducing us again to Rabbi Isaac Jarrett from Los Angeles, California. Um, just fantastic conversation with him. And we'll continue that uh, in a couple of weeks. Yep. Andrew Ripp coming up next with Jericho on your Celebration Radio Network. Prayer coming up, 800-721-9313. Thanks again, Pastor Ryan, for being here. Thank you, my friend. God bless. Always a pleasure. You as well. Oh, yes, Lord. The battle belongs to you. That is Phil Wickham and his latest Battle Belongs on your Celebration Radio Network. My number, 800-721-9313. If you uh, still have a prayer request, uh, Alan and I are here, and, and uh, we can always take that and pray for you uh, anytime during the day. You don't need to just wait until someone is actually on the air. But Well, there's uh, about an inch and a half stack of uh, prayer cards that are in front of me here on the board. Lord, I just lift you up today, praising you, thanking you for who you are and what you do and what you're about to do in each one of these situations that I'm looking at this morning. Lord, you know each one of them intimately. You know every detail down to the periods, commas, and the crossing of the T's and the dotting of the I's. And I just pray that you reach into every situation that's written down here and that they feel you reaching into that situation. And they know that you're the one that is in control, that you will provide the provision they need, the healing, restoration, the deliverance from addiction. Lord, and we just thank you for what you're doing in this country and around the world. We just pray that everyone feels your presence in Jesus' name. Amen. And thank you for what you do, Lord. Well, Micah Tyler coming up next with New Today on your Celebration Radio Network. Thanks again for allowing us to be part of your morning. We'll see you tomorrow for Recovery Radio.